Here's a shot of my 150 gallon right after I got it set up. I took some footage of how I created the rockscape. So in this video I'll be showing how I drilled out the rocks, used acrylic rods and cement to put them together, and some of the things I found out while doing it. Here I just want to quickly go over the tools I used on this stage. Now you can use just about any kind of drill, but a hammer drill is specific for masonry and it makes things a lot easier. So this one was only I think 22 bucks from Harbor Freight, so it's money well spent getting all these rocks drilled out. These rods I'm using are 3 eighths of an inch and they're from US Plastics. They're just standard acrylic rod. Getting onto the masonry bits, it's important to know just uh, which ones to use, so it's good to pick up a set. Um, now, this is the 3 8 and that's the same size as these acrylic rods. So it's good to start some holes with that, but uh, a lot of the drilling will also be done with the just one size up, which is one half. And that just allows uh, a bit more room for these rods to pass through. Now the larger ones are mostly just for uh, removing material going up to three quarters of an inch. For shaping the rock, a mini sledgehammer works the best. A screwdriver can work, but a chisel will allow more precision. Also, don't forget the safety glasses because there's a lot of shrapnel with the small bits of rock flying everywhere. So when you're starting out, you want to take each piece individually and just kind of work with it. Now with mine, I just took each piece and tried to make it a little more interesting by drilling some holes into it. It's kind of just a process of seeing how each piece is going to work together with all the rest. Now one reason to do this also is that as the rock comes, it might not look very interesting. Like if you just got big lumps of rock and you try and stick those together, it's going to look kind of terrible. Now certain types of rock are going to be a little more forgiving when you're drilling holes into it. This is Fiji rock from Bulk Reef Supply. Other types of rock can be either harder or softer. A lot of this is sort of trial and error and you'll kind of figure out the technique as you go. Now this can happen if you put a lot of holes into the piece. And you're just going to break apart eventually. So as soon as this happens, you can generally just grab a rubber band and stick the pieces back together. Now this is important just because all the pieces start to look the same if they're broken apart. So getting into using concrete to join the pieces, you first want to prepare an area that's going to be good for you to work in. You mainly need an area where you can set up the rocks and have them stay put. So a piece of carpet or a piece of foam like I have here is a good idea. For this aquascape I used hydraulic cement. It's a fast setting type that's mainly used for filling gaps. Now because of how fast it sets, you're gonna be using really small batches. So you'll just need a small mixing dish like this with a stir stick. You'll also wanna use compressed air to be able to blast away any kind of sand or dust from the rocks. This actually makes a big difference when trying to get this cement to stick to the rock. Now while I was taking footage of the entire process, I thought it would be helpful to just show what not to do. Now here I'm just more or less using the concrete in the same way that I would use reef putty and this just didn't work. So I'm trying to just put globs of the concrete onto the rock and then use the other piece of rock to kind of smush them together. Now the concrete just started to dry way too quickly and so I couldn't get any kind of good bond between the pieces. Now this method here worked a lot better because you're not actually touching the concrete with your hand so much. So I basically just mixed it together as quickly as possible and then started to spread it right on the rocks directly. So the concrete's more of a liquid at this point, so it flows a lot better into the cracks. Doing it this way allowed me to get the cement in there a lot quicker. Now once I got the cement in there, I could push the rocks together and then start pushing in the cement from all angles with my fingers. I also added a couple pieces of rubble to the concrete just to hide it a little bit. Now working with smaller pieces is generally better to use the reef putty. In my case I had a couple of rocks set aside that I wanted to put back again later. Like where I showed myself breaking apart that one and then putting it back together with the rubber band. Alright so now it's all even consistency, even color, so it's well mixed. Take my spray bottle, spray both pieces lightly. Now another thing that I found that works well with the putty is to use a weight like I have here just to press down during the first 10 minutes or so. Just have some rags to just help distribute the force and then I'm just attaching this piece here 
Now as you place each piece individually, you just kind of want to be thinking about the big picture as the aquascape comes together. Now rather than attaching absolutely everything together, you want to think about different sections so that you can still get it into the tank easily. Now transferring the rockscape into your tank needs to be done fairly carefully. I find it's a little easier to do this when the tank's full, just because of the buoyancy effect. Here's the longer pieces of rod used in the structure. Now here's the tank after about two months. You can see I've added a little bit of live rock to it as well. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it and visit GMAC Reef for more reef stuff.